Hello guys and welcome to Programmarist. Today we will talk about the Dijkstra algorithm. In the previous episode that I uploaded, that you can watch by clicking on the top right corner of this video, well, I talked about the BFS algorithm. The BFS algorithm found the shortest path from two points starting at point A and ending at point B. But the problem with the BFS algorithm is that, well, it works only if the weights of the edges are of the same scale, meaning that every single edge is of the same size. When you start to messing up with this and setting different weights to different edges, then the BFS algorithm may give you wrong results. So in order to deal with this, today we're going to talk about the Dijkstra algorithm, which is, you can look at it as a modification of the BFS algorithm to deal exactly with this kind of problem. The problem that finding the shortest path from point A to point B when the weights of the edges are different. So as before, we have a graph with vertices, okay? The vertices, I marked them with squares and circles, but they are the same things, just, uh, I just... I did it just to make sure that you understand that we're going from point A to point B, which are circles, and other edges, I'm sorry, other vertices are squares, okay? And the weights of these edges are marked on the edges. So if you've used the BFS algorithm, which ignores the weights of the edges, we can see that every route here is actually of length of two hops, I mean three hops, okay, one, two, three, and also here and here. So the BFS algorithm could have found us each and every one of these paths at the shortest path. But if we look closely at the weights of these edges, we can see that this path is 1 plus 3 is 4, is 8, and this path is 7. So I will make a small sketch of this graph showing the distances of each path. Okay, so starting at point A, if we go at the top path, we'll get path of 8. If we go at the middle path, we'll get a path of 7. And if we go through the lower path, will again get a path of 8. So the shortest path from this graph is actually the middle path and today we will see how Dijkstra algorithm will find this path. So let's look at the BFS algorithm and see how we can change it in order to deal with this problem. So what did the BFS do? He took the node A okay, and he marked the distance for each of the neighbors of A with the distance of the edge. Okay, so so now we will do the same thing. We'll write all the nodes that we have. We have six nodes. So at the beginning all of the distances are known or infinity as you like. And what the BFS did, he went through the the several, the first node, the node of A and marked the distance to each and every neighbor. So We'll do the same thing here, 1, 4, and 2, okay? So the next thing that the BFS algorithm did is he, he took the first neighbor from the neighbors list and dealt with it. But in order to deal with our problem, this won't be enough. What we will do, what we will change in the BFS algorithm is that instead of just picking the first neighbor that we put inside the list, we'll pick the neighbor with the smallest distance from the node A that we calculate. Okay, so in this example, this will be node A. After picking node A, we'll update all its neighbors. So we'll update the neighbor D with the distance of 3 plus the distance 1, which will be 4. Okay, and we will mark it as done. And we'll do it again. We'll put, take the node C from the list and we'll mark its, its neighbor F with the distance of 2 plus 1, which is 3. And we'll mark it as done. And we'll do it again for the next node, which is F. F will be... its neighbor is actually B. Okay, the big B. And we're already reaching B. But we will not stop there. So let's see. The distance to f is 3. 
from the node A, the distance from F to B is 5, so together it will be 8. Okay, in the BFS algorithm we will finish here, but in Dijkstra we will not finish here. Okay, so we handle the F. Now we will take the minimum node, which will, can be either B or D. Okay, let's take B. So we take B and we know that its neighbor is E and the distance between B and E is 2. So 2 plus 4 is 6 and we'll mark the distance to E as 6. Mark it as done. The next node is D. D to B is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. We'll not update it. We'll mark it as done. And the next node is E. E is dist the distance is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. And we know we now see that we can get to node B with the distance of 7. So now we will update it with 7. We'll mark E as done. And now we will take the next node with the shortest distance, which is B. So once we take the node that we are looking for as the target, only then we can finish. Because then we know that this node is the shortest node of all the nodes that are left. Okay, so this is the modified Dijkstra algorithm. So let's look again at what the Dijkstra algorithm did. If put all the nodes, okay, we can put also the node A here and mark it as distance from itself as zero. And what we did at every step was to take the shortest, the, the node with the shortest distance from all of the list. We handled it and we've put We've updated all its neighbors with the new distance, which is the minimum between the distance that they already have and the distance that we can get there through that node. So, for example, when we updated the node B for the first time, it was with the distance of 8 when we got through this path. But on the second time, when we got to the node B through this path, we didn't update it because it was the same distance, so there was no need. But when we got there with this path, we did update it to be 7 because it is shortest. What I didn't tell you yet was how did I pick the smallest number from all of the nodes, okay? And there are lots of solutions to this and every solution gives us different complexity, the time complexity of the algorithm. If we store these nodes as a list, a simple list, what we'll need to do to find the smallest number is to go over all of the list. So this algorithm, it goes over all of the edges once or twice, constant number of times. And for each node, what he does is searches this list to find the minimum node. So we will have this kind of complexity, the edges plus the number of nodes squared. Another solution can be using heap for this solution. But when we're using heap, okay, the finding the minimum is a constant number of times. But when we insert or remove or update a value inside a heap, it is a logarithmic time. So how will it behave now? We will need for every edge that we potentially might update the distance, we will need for every edge a logarithmic time, okay, for updating. And every time we take a node out for every step, for every node in our steps, we will need to take out a node. Okay, so this is the complexity O of this if we use a heap. Now, I will not go into details, but if you will use a Fibonacci heap, which is another data structure, we, you can get rid of this log, log and you will end up with the complexity of E and log N, okay, which is better than the complexity we got before, which is e plus n squared for the simple list. So this is the complexity of the Dijkstra algorithm. You have watched an episode about the Dijkstra algorithm. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more algorithm videos by clicking over here, or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to watch more code-related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on Program Artist.